sup. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the free apps Google Sheets and Google Forms to build a real functional question bank using a script that I wrote with ChatGPT. This is where I would usually make a joke or insert some kind of meme, but this video is going to be long and hard enough as it is. That's what she said. No time. But she did. No time. Let's start by setting up the Google Sheet that will serve as our master question bank. Go ahead and click on the link in the video description. That'll take you to the tools section of my website. And then you'll see these links here on the web page. Go ahead and click on the link for the master Q bank. Um, this will ask you to sign into your Google account. So go ahead and do that. This is the template where I store all of my questions. It has a simple script that generates a unique question ID for each of the questions that you write, very similar to what UWorld has. Um, this just makes it easier for you to keep track of the questions that you need to fix as you find errors or typos. It also makes it so you can curate blocks of specific questions, even if they're unrelated. Click on Use Template. And the first thing that we have to do is give permission to the QID script to access our Google Drive. If we don't, then it won't work and you won't get generate any QIDs. And we'll have to do the same thing with the quiz generator sheet here in just a minute. So the next thing you have to do is click on extensions and then apps scripts. This will take you to the scripts page, click on run. and it might take a little bit for that to work. The next thing you should see is the authorization required pop-up window. Click on review permissions. And then choose the Google account that you wanna use. You'll get a warning that uh, Google hasn't verified this app and it warns you that you shouldn't give it access unless the developer, which if you look closely is you, verifies the app. Go ahead and click on advanced go to master Q bank, even though it recommends unsafe, it's totally safe, nothing nefarious going on in that code. It's gonna ask you again to make sure that you really trust master Q bank script. Go ahead and click allow. Click on this timer that's in the upper left hand corner. This will allow us to view our triggers dashboard. From the triggers dashboard in the bottom right hand corner, we should see a blue button that says add trigger, click on that. You can go ahead and leave all of the fields alone except for this select event type and go ahead and change that to on edit. This makes it so that the automation will run automatically every time we edit the page. So if we paste in a new question or if we make any changes to the page, it'll go ahead and check for new entries and generate a QID for that question automatically. Change the failure notification settings if you want. This will just notify you via email if the script were to ever fail. But uh, honestly, you probably don't need to mess with this. Hopefully it never fails and then go ahead and close out of that window. The master cube bank is set up so that each of the red column headers tells you what information is going to be used in the script to generate the quizzes. So if you move any of these columns around, the script will crash and burn and it won't work. The QID is that unique identifier. It will be pulled into all of the question descriptions for each of the questions that you generate so that you or whoever's answering the question can copy down the number if there are any issues and you know exactly which question you need to modify. The second column doesn't affect anything within the script, so you can put whatever you want there. I chose to just put the topics of each question, kind of broad topics like you might see in UWorld or similar question banks, but it can effectively be whatever metadata that you want. Just don't move it. Now, so let me just grab some questions here for demonstration purposes. And you can see that the QID is being automatically generated. It's working just as we intended. Notice in column C that this contains all of the text for the question stem itself. Columns D through H contain all of the answer options. Column I tells Google Forms which answer is the correct answer. And it's very important that this be only a letter A through E and that it is only uppercase. If it's a lowercase, then it won't recognize it. Column J is where you can add any explanation or further information that explains why the correct answer is correct or why the incorrect answers are incorrect. These last two columns are reserved for any image that you would like to put into your question um, and a space for you to save the URL for where you found it. Currently, the Google Sheets API doesn't allow you to 
import an image directly into Google Forms from the image cell. So it needs a public URL, which is something that I think you can automate. Um, but my goal with this QBank was for it to be totally self-sufficient and contained um, and public URLs break all the time. And so you'd constantly have to be updating your image URLs. So for now, you can just manually add the image by pasting the URL into the form for each of the questions that you want to have an image associated with it. Um, and you can do this by hand for now. I may change this to an automated feature in the future. So subscribe if you think you'd be interested in having that and you'll know when it happens. The rest of the columns are open for you to add any metadata that you can think of that would be helpful to sort questions by. I might make a column based off of the course that I'm taking, or maybe I have a tutoring client that I want to make a quiz for. So I'll go ahead and put their name on each of the questions that I want to go into their quiz. Then all I have to do is click on this header column and then select this filter button. And then I can set a filter to isolate just the questions that I want um, for my tutoring client, John. So let's head back to my website. Again, link is in the video description. And we're ready now to set up our quiz generator. You could absolutely put everything in this sheet into just the quiz generator and then apply filters to select only the questions that you want to make into a quiz. But I prefer to just paste in the exact questions that I want to use each time I want to use it. So let's go ahead and click on the link for the quiz generator. Then we're going to select use template. So just like last time, we can select extensions and then apps scripts, and then click on run to go ahead and bring out that authorization required pop up again. And again, it's going to want us to review the permissions. So go ahead and click on review permissions, choose the account that we want to use and then select advance and then go to QBank script unsafe. I promise it's it's really safe and then click allow there's no need to set up any triggers with this script so we are done so go ahead and close out of that screen you'll see the same header row in this sheet um, with the important columns being highlighted in green this time so that i don't get confused when i am looking at my qbank and when i'm looking at the quiz generator you can change the colors that won't mess with the script at all go nuts now I just copy the questions that I want to use from my master QBank and paste them into the generator. And then to make the quiz, all you have to do is click on this menu button, create quiz, and then generate. The script will run. And if you have a lot of questions, it may take a minute. So just sit tight. And then all you have to do is go back to your Google Drive, and then you should see our quiz pop up in the suggested feed. Double click and it will take us to the Google form which has been turned into our quiz. The next thing I recommend is that you click on the settings and then select this release grades immediately after each submission. That way after you take it or whoever you send it to, they'll be able to see what the right answers were after they take the quiz. And then from here, you can manually add more questions, insert images, rearrange questions or answer choices um, if you want to. I don't need to do that for John. So whenever you're ready, you can just click on send and then either enter in email addresses of the people you want to send it to, or you can get a shareable link and they can use that to take the quiz. Now imagine you're working in a group of two to three people and everybody agrees to create five to 10 questions every week based off of the topics that you guys are studying as a group. And then at the end of the week, each of the group members will create a quiz using this quiz generator and send it to each of the other members of the group. That would be a highly effective use of group study. And it would make sure that everybody's pulling their weight and contributing to the overall learning experience. Not only are you rapidly improving your test taking skills, but you're able to amass a resource that's super valuable. And later on down the line, if you decide to tutor, you could even potentially monetize. I wish I would have started building this like six years ago, <laughs> honestly. Guys, that's all for this one. Links to everything are in the video description below, available to you for free because I love you. If you think you'd be interested in seeing a separate walkthrough where I show the prompts and process I use to create USMLE style questions to place in my QBank, make sure you're subscribed because I'm putting the finishing touches on that video and it should be out soon. Thanks for watching.